you're in the mix. SKM presents Strictly for the Music Podcast. You are now live with the number one podcast for all upcoming artists worldwide. It's the real. The real deal. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode. This is Strictly for the Music Podcast. I'm your host, SKM. The next guest I got live in the rest is named after an all too real episode of Doria. Queen the Brand is a dark alternate rock, grunge, punk power trio that brings back music based on the harsh truths of reality. Newly released CP, open wide. Ladies gentlemen, let's give a warm welcome to Quinn the Brain. Thank you. That was a great intro. Thank you so much. I appreciate you coming on the podcast. Um, Wow. So, uh, so you're based out of Houston, Texas. Tell the audience a little bit of how you formed this band. Um, sure. Yeah. The band kind of formed itself after years of, um, I guess me trying to find people to play with. So, uh, Quinn the Brain had like different lineups and changes and names, um, always kind of forming around what I want, what I was hoping to, I guess, create. And eventually I just found the right people after literally years and, um, you know, and now we're a full fledged band. All right. So, um, you, you talk about, um, years of forming this band. So, uh, let me ask you this. Since, uh, have you guys ever performed live, like in your local area? Yeah. We've been playing live. I, we stepped out onto the music scene. I think, um, like the fall of 2017 and we've been playing pretty steadily since then. So, I mean, obviously before the pandemic, but um, we were playing at least like two to three shows a month since then. All right. That's dope. Um, let me ask you this. Have you always uh, played music? No, actually. Uh, well, I guess it depends on who you're asking. So for me, I no, I did not always play music. You know, I started off as a fan and um, it just got to a point where I didn't want to just be the fan anymore. I wanted to, you know, be closer. And so I just decided, like, I'm going to learn and do this. And through years of trying and effort. You know, I finally was able to achieve what I wanted to. The guys in my band, however, have been playing for like years. Like, I'm pretty sure my drummer has been playing since like at least middle school, at least. He might be going elementary, who knows? And I know my bass player has been, play- you know, they, they both played in like um, different bands. So, but this one is um, my first band and kind of like, you know, my, uh, I wouldn't call it a pet project, but like my main thing. So. All right, so um, let me ask you this. Um, all right, so uh, growing up and doing music and um, forming this band since 2017, what was it like, and what was the uh, reaction of the audience when live when you're doing your live performance? Um, the reaction of the audience, honestly, usually people don't really know. Or, well, I wouldn't say that. It's more like you know, some people are really into it, and some people are kind of like whatever I I feel like we're on um, extremes there's really not much of a middle ground you kind of either like us or you don't so that's just how it seems at least from my point of view okay all right so um wow um so this um EP was released uh this year right yeah yeah we had planned on releasing it and then the pandemic happened because we were we were setting up a tour um but right before kind of like planning on doing something in the summer then the pandemic hit and a lot of people like a lot of people in different bands kind of you know paused everything or dropped something and we just decided to still put it out because we've been sitting on it already since um it, the ep had been in the works for a while and it, it's just one of those scenarios where it kept getting pushed back and get put getting pushed back and finally we were ready to release it and we figure, you know, screw it. We'll just put it out, even though we can't play to it. We can't tour. We can't, we can't support it. And when you put out music without support, you know, you're not going to like, it was, it was fun. It was cool to put it out, but it was also very anticlimactic 
Cause you're just like, all right, it's out. Now what? You know, I did the one thing. Usually you celebrate it by playing shows and doing stuff and like, you know, getting to actually like go out and do things. And it was kind of weird to put it out to nothing as far as like shows go. But, um, it, it receives a lot of good, um, feedback and claims from writers and what size. So I'm so glad we put it out. It, it, it worked out well. All right. All right. All right. So, um, all right. Let me ask you this. Um, how are you different from other bands? That's a, that's a, I feel like it's a loaded question. Um, I mean, I, I don't, I'm not even sure how to answer that. I mean, I like to think that we have our own sound, you know, um, that we kind of, we, we strive to be original to us, you know, um, there's, there's not really, there, you, it's really hard to be original these days in the first place, but, you know, um, we kind of make it a point to write music for ourselves. And so there's no like pressure on, Oh, well, will the people like it? Like usually if we like it, that's kind of enough. And luckily that's kind of helped because it turns out that certain people do like what we like. It's just, um, it's, it's like a, a niche, right? Like it's, you got to find your own people. And um, I think we've kind of started to find some of those people who like the same things. All right, that's dope. All right, so um, all right, um, let's, let's talk about the first song off the EP. Like, um, how was the creative process like, and um, what were you going through at the time you were doing this song? Um, first song off the EP is Open Wide. That song was, um, it was written with, through a series of different bass players because the, the usual, the writing process has been usually I'll write either a main riff or part of a song and I'll bring it to, um, the band. But at the time, the band was just me and the drummer because we've gone through a few bass players, um, you know, just things haven't been clicking. And at the time, um, it's funny because that song was, I'm, I think one of our previous bass players was like knocking it a little bit like, oh, do we really need to do this song? Like, you know, maybe we should just like ditch it. And I'm all about like, well, let's see where it goes. You know, it's too early to ditch a song. So let's just keep going and just see where it ends up and actually ended up somewhere kind of cool. So, um, at the time I, when we were recreating or we were about to record the EP, that was my favorite song at the time. Like, you know, I feel like every artist has their favorite song when they're right. They're like, Oh, and it's usually the newest song. So I'm pretty sure at the time that was like kind of the newer songs. So I was like, Oh, this is the one it's going to be the, single of the EP let's say like that you know the one that we'll focus on and um I don't know as far as I think your other question was what was it about is that what you said I'm not actually quite sure was second question to it oh I said um what was like um what was like what inspired you like right oh inspiration um a lot of actually I mean the a lot of my songs are kind of inspired by like real life events or something that kind of triggers me. And for that particular song, I think it was just like feelings of seeing more than people realize, you know, I think everyone kind of feels that way where, where I, you can see past just like the black and white, like you see the gray areas and it's not, you know, so easy and then, you know, it's, I don't know, it's really complicated. <laughs> I feel like you to get into the nitty gritty. I am plus when everyone was, you know, everyone has a different, um, listening experience. So what one person might think, somebody else might think something different, which I, I do like about songs. I like that people create their own reasonings behind it. So I don't want to completely spoil it by telling what exactly it's all about. All right. All right. All right. So let me ask you this. All right, step on me, man. Um, this was the second song off the EP. Can you run us through about um, what was it like um, doing the same thing, like the creative process, like what gets you in the zone of 
making these kids on this on this EP. I gotcha. Um, Step on me. That one was um, written actually out of just pure anger because I had worked for this company that was um, taking advantage and kind of like. I know a lot of people feel this way, you know, kind of being abused and like, you know, can't really do anything about it, you know. Um, and so I kind of took to song form and I kind of just started. Um, it's I, It usually starts with like some kind of a riff. So I think it started with the riff. And then I, I remember writing the song like in the most um, inconvenient places of all time. Like I'd be driving and then I'd be like, oh, this is a great like song lyrics, let me write it down while I'm driving or, you know, I'd be in the shower and I'd be like, Oh, that's a really good idea. And I would literally like jump out just to write it out and get like water everywhere. It was just like a lot of inconvenient moments like that for that song in particular. Cause I was, I was dwelling a lot at that time period. I kept like thinking about the situation I was in and getting annoyed. And like that song kind of just festered from um, anger and yeah, I just came out to be kind of like a, a little bit um, a head pepper. And I mean, I, I do realize that I think it's our most explicit song on the album. <laughs> so um, apparently I have a potty mouth. So that's the one that, you know, I have to like warn people if they want to play it. Like, oh, by the way, there's a bunch of moms on there. Just letting you know in case you have rules. So it's a fun one, though. That's so it's so I like it. Um all right, so uh let's go to the next one. Coming three. Yeah, that one um I that was like another experience. I there was a moment where it just seemed like I was getting like into bad luck after bad luck after bad luck and I'm not sure if you're aware of there's there's a superstition about bad things coming in threes. And so that song, I kept getting, I kept ending up in these like really bad situations. Like, you know, um, I think one of them was, you know, I just moved into a new apartment and the apartment sold. So I had to move out again after like three months of just being there. And I was like, Oh, how, you know, inconvenient is that? And then, you know, I think there was like a, there's like, um, like bugs in the living room. It was like a lot of bad luck scenarios. And it got to a point where I was once again dwelling about, you know, how much like crappy luck I kept having. And the song was kind of born out of that is um, just, you know, uh, a lot of my songwriting is, is um, done over time. I'm not one of those people who write songs in five minutes. Like all my songs, like or over course of time so I'll have a riff and then I'll think about it and then I'll, I'll like the the song will slowly put itself together um so that one kind of was I guess similar to Step on Me in that sense that it was built around events and a course of time and um you know bring into the band and we kind of like structured it together at, in the end All right, all right. So, um, leading to uh, number four, Dark Sky. Yeah, that's probably our our um, darkest song, I guess. It's funny because we'll get like doom band comparisons, and I'm pretty sure it's because of that song. You know, they'll be like, "Oh, you sounds kind of doomy," and I'm like, "Well, I know that song is a little bit on that side," and um, that song kind of was I remember writing it and at the t- I didn't think it was that I guess heavy or dark sounding at the time but it's my fa- my drummer's favorite song because he's really into like metal and you know doom and oh, I don't know about doom actually he's just really into metal and heavy stuff and like you know he just like eats that song up so we had to include it on the EP and um you know, we, we do play it live too. It's just, it's one of those songs that it's been around for so long now that I'm just kind of, you know, I'll, I'll, we'll sometimes add it to the list. Sometimes we won't, but that one's kind of a, a weird one in a sense that it's not very obvious. Like the other songs are, might be obvious about what they are. And this one's kind of more abstract 
you know, um, if you had to like, I guess, talk about what it really is about, it's just kind of like the loss of innocence. But, you know, like I said, it's so abstract that each person who listens to it probably has their own takeaway. All right. <clears throat> All right. So um, let me ask you this. Since you already released the EP, I'm not sure if you have a YouTube channel or anything, but if you do, can you plug it in? And um, on that note, uh, can you tell us about any music videos you got or any uh, videos, live performances you got maybe on a YouTube channel? Yeah, we do have a YouTube. Um, if you search Quinn the Brain, uh, it will be popping right up. And we have a few live performances, but they're really old. Like a lot of them from like 20... 18, maybe 2017, 2019. Like there's, there's a few, um, old ones on there. I'm sitting on a few. Uh, we're actually in the process of, we recorded a music video, um, in August, but, um, this has been taking a while to like edit it because we're doing it ourselves. And so, um, it's just, it's kind of one of those experiences was where you just don't realize how difficult something is and how much time and effort goes into it until you do it yourself. And I've, I've kind of run into a lot of issues, but anyways, besides that, it's coming along pretty good. I think it's going to look awesome. Um, I'm as far as like release date goes, all I can say is soon, <laughs> but, um, we're not ready to announce that just yet, but it is off the EP and it'll be the first song open wide. Um, hoping, I'm hoping for it to be come out early in the year. So hopefully end of January, beginning February is what I'm aiming for. But, you know, you just never know. It's, it's kind of hard to, you know, have a full-time band and have a full-time job and just like get everything done at the same time. But, you know, it's worth it in the end. So I think it'll come out cool once it's finished. All right. <clears throat> All right. That's dope. Okay. So let me ask you this. Um, can your can your supporters or the audience maybe here maybe expect uh maybe not maybe another music video like uh come by threes or dark skies would that be something you should be working on in twenty twenty one? So you're asking me if there is another music video for a different song off the album? Yeah, off the EP. You know, I I thought about it because I mean it's kind of like I guess in our in our hands. Um, it would kind of almost depend if it would, if people even would want one, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not even sure. Cause it's like, we got the first one and, um, I guess it depends on the pandemic as well. If the pandemic continues, then, um, I'd be down to try to do another one just cause we'll have, you know, there's, there's no shows. So therefore there's a little bit more time, but, um, that one's just kind of up in the air. I, there's no plans for it, but it's possible. It just kind of depends if the people want it. All right. All right. So um, tell us a little bit about your first time performing and what was it like? And did you guys do a cover song or was it one, a song that you've already done? Before? Um, We don't do covers. So our, our first time we played, we played all of our original songs, which I think we had. By the time we played our first show, we had... At, we had at least, we had a full set worth of songs. So a full set usually is like, what, 30 minutes, 45 minutes max. And I'm pretty sure our set was 30 minutes. And um, actually, one of the well, comes in threes, which is, uh, we played that, we played that on our first show, is, is recorded and is on our YouTube channel. I think that's literally the first video we uploaded. And it's, I think it's kind of funny because, um, I was super nervous, obviously, and it was our first show and um, it was in like September and we were opening up for a bunch of like cooler, um, Houston bands. And, um, and I, I think I wore these like really big platform shoes, like heels, like an idiot, not realizing that it'd be like really difficult to be on stage. So I feel like I was towering and it was like twice as awkward because I didn't think about something like that. You know, things that you would never really, like, not really think about until you experience it. And I was like, oh, that was a bad idea. Mental note, don't do that again. You know, stuff like that. So a lot of the first show was, like, nerves and finding out what you shouldn't do live. So actually, that happened for a while. Like, I felt like that learning experience kept on happening until 
now essentially where I feel like, okay, I think I know the do's and don'ts of what you should, you know, should and should not do on stage. Let me ask you this. Um, how did you get involved in this show? What do you mean? The first, the first show? Yeah, your first show you ever did. Like, how did you, how did you, uh, get to play on the, on, on the, on a, on a venue, you know? Oh, gotcha. Um, well, I've been pretty plugged into the Houston music scene. So even though I wasn't playing shows, I was going to shows. So I, I know a lot of people in the Houston scene and, um, I just kind of like, you know, networked and was like, put it out there that I want to play show. And, um, we, we played with people we knew and it was, it was pretty fun. Like it was nice to have somebody else, um, do, do the, I guess the setup of the show, which as you know, I'm sure that's like a whole new ordeal. Like sometimes you have to put on a show yourself or you get asked to play on the show. And when you're asked, it's a lot easier because you're not like in control of, you know, bands and timing and mess. Um, I've, I've now done it since then and it is a lot of work, but, um, at the, at the time it was just through networking, you know, um, I knew a lot of musicians and once we established or once we announced that we were a band, we, we put out three songs when we, when we formed, we kind of like, um, dropped it online on our, on our Facebooks and Instagrams, whatever is, you know, put it out there like, Hey, we're a new band. And we recorded three songs, um, which were actually comes in three step on me and dark skies, but with another bass player. And, um, we released it at the time and, uh, we weren't actually ready to even record, to be honest, when we released that. Cause when I listened to that, to that EP, I'm just like, Oh God, it's, so horrible sounding so we took it off like i don't think anyone unless you like bought it when it was on Bandcamp, it's no longer like online anymore so there are you know i'm sure there's some people who have copies of those original songs which i now consider demos but um wow i feel like i've gone on a rant and i have no idea how i got to this point <laughs> sorry um but yeah back to your question as far as so how do we get on that show is just through networking and just knowing people in the scene you got any favorite venues? Yeah, um, I, I have a lot of favorite venues. So the first show we played was at Dan Electro's, and I love that venue. It's awesome. As far as like, you know, it's in the Heights. It's um, easy. Not only is it easy to get to, but it's easy to book at. Um, I love like they have a huge patio. It's they treat you really well. The sound system is okay, but like you know, they make up in a lot of different ways. Rudyard's is really cool. Um, that's kind of like a Houston staple. Everybody plays there or wants to play there. And um, I've always loved the sound there because I feel like we sound the best when we play there. Um, a lot of it has to do with obviously the the sound guy Joe at Rudyard's is pretty amazing. And um, other places that you know that we've liked that we've played at. There's just a lot, I guess. I'm trying to think of a few that we've done besides that. Um, I don't know why I'm blanking because we've we've played all over Acadia on North, like North Houston. It's kind of like in the boonies, but that place is awesome because they're they have a, an amazing stage and they're incredibly nice to you and they make you feel very welcome. So that's always cool because not a lot of places do, but they go out of their way and kind of like treat you well. And um, it's kind of a drive and a lot of people won't even go there because it's it's far, but it's kind of worth it. Um, we did also play this place called Darwin's. That was pretty awesome. Um, it's, it's kind of more of a bar, but they set it up and, you know, they made it work and, um, that was a cool experience because it was just us and one other band and having just two bands on a bill is usually kind of rare, but they kind of like hooked it up and went out of their way to make it sound as, you know, as good as possible for the tiny venue it was. And, you know, we've been lucky enough to play like, um, a few different places. We played like a brewery, um, holler brewery. That was pretty cool. And that was kind of like a bucket list thing for us because, you know, asking a brewery asking you to play there. I mean, usually they ask cover bands. It's like kind of rare for them to ask like original bands unless you're kind of bigger. 
So when we got asked, I was like super excited. And <laughs> that was just a fiasco in itself because we ended up playing like two hours and we don't even have two hours worth of material. So we ended up like playing one hour of songs that we did have and one hour of jams, which was interesting because we're not really a jam kind of band, but we made it happen and it was pretty fun. All right. So do you have any, uh, like one of the, like, can you tell the audience, like a best memory while live performing? A best memory. Um, I guess that's, I'm trying to think. I don't know. I feel like the, when I'm on stage, I don't, in the beginning when I used to play, I, I, re, I noticed everything, you know, like if somebody even like walked away, I would notice, but now like I don't notice anything. So as far as memories go, it's kind of like a blur. Like when we get, when we play, it's like the, dredge, the adrenaline is like rushing and, you know, you're kind of just going through it. And half the time I'm just making, trying to make sure I don't fall over. So um, as far as best memories go, I'm just like, I'm trying to remember. I mean, I I don't even know what to say for that. I mean, I some of my favorite memories at our shows is actually just hanging out with other bands. Like, that's kind of like really fun. Like when you get to meet other bands and we made a lot of friends that way, just like playing the same show, not knowing who we are, but then like, either liking someone else's music or just liking them in general and hitting it off and having a good night. Like that's pretty fun. And usually those stick out way more to me than our actual performances. All right. All right. So, um, all right. So we talked about you live performing and all this, but my next question is going to be is, would you be interested in doing like a live performance on any live streaming platform? For example, Instagram live, Facebook live, or YouTube live? Yeah, we've done something like that. Well, we did something like that before the pandemic for fun. It wasn't a real actual streaming thing. I think we, I mean, it was as far as I think it was like Instagram live. And I think we've done a Facebook live and it was, it was, we were actually playing shows though. So it was more like somebody was just, you know, doing us a favor and just like putting it out there. But as far as like pandemic kind of shows where you were, literally playing live for that um we haven't done anything like that actually we've taken this this break as a time to like focus on other stuff so we haven't played um a real show since like march and that's been okay actually because we there's been a lot of stuff to work on but as far as like what your question about facebook and we have nothing against it we just haven't done it all right so let me ask you this um, would you would you like play with any other band like at maybe at a venue or anything or open up for any band dead or alive like who would it be and why? Yeah, um, I mean, as a rule of thumb, we kind of play with anybody and everybody. But your question's more of who would we want to play with or open up for? Um. There's, I feel like there's so many answers to that question. If you ask my drummer this, he would immediately say Slayer. I know that's like his answer right away. But as far as like as for me goes, like I know my my ideal situation. I would love to open up for Babes in Toyland, which is a band that inspired me a lot. So that would be really cool. But um, if we're talking like locally, you know. There's a bunch of bands that I would love to play with. Um, there's a lot of cool bands in the scene, you know, that I haven't either had a chance to play with yet or um, are hoping to play with. Or I don't know. There's even bands that are kind of like on the underground level that we would love to play with. Um, we did get we we were lucky enough to play with a few. Like I know we played with Skating Polly and that was neat. And we played with like Star Crawler. That was cool. And there was a bunch of other bands that kind of, we played with Faya. They're from San Antonio. They're always fun. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's, there's like a dozen bands that we would love to open up for or play with just because we idolize them or love them or, um, honestly, like pretty much anybody we admire, we'd love to open up for. All right. So, um, who's your music targeted for? Um, 
I guess people who just like music. I don't know. Like we, I don't, when we write songs, we don't really target anybody to be quite honest. Like we write for ourselves. And so, um, it sounds weird to say we target ourselves because that's not really accurate, but I mean, I guess we just have different elements. Like, I know, like, I, I personally enjoy a little bit of noise and, like, dissonance and, like, minor keys a lot. So I kind of go for that. And I know there's people out there who like those kind of sounds. So um, I guess our target audience is kind of, like, people with similar tastes in music, you know, because if we're happy with it, then they're probably going to be happy with it, too. Um, we're definitely in a smaller um, group as far as all that kind of goes. You know, we're not... We're not trying to become a band that's going to get played on the radio. First of all, we wouldn't be played on the radio. We're too weird. I don't know if that's the right word, but we're we're not like commercial enough to play the radio. And we're aware of that and we're completely okay with it. But, um, you know, we, we do kind of fancy ourselves as being like an underground kind of band where, you know, people with similar interests might be into our kind of stuff. All right. Um, what are your music guilty pleasures? Uh, you know, I don't actually feel like I have a guilty pleasure because I will admit, you know, the music that I listen to. So, you know, there's a lot. I think, I think people who listen to our music is, are always surprised to hear like things that at least I like because I'm all over the place, even though we play a specific kind of music. I like music from all sorts of like backgrounds. So, you know, I'll like pop stuff and, um, you know, other kind of stuff like, I don't know, metal or punk or, um, I'm trying to think of other things, the occasional hip hop or R and B or like blues or, you know, classical or classic. I'm like all over the place. So, but, um, as far as guilty pleasures go, I don't know. I mean, some people would think it's embarrassing that I like 80s hair metal music. I don't think that's embarrassing at all. But, or, you know, um, I grew up like, you know, around the time of all the pop, the pop, pop groups like Britney Spears and like Spice Girls and all that. And some people would consider that a guilty pleasure, but I kind of feel like, well, you know, that was my time period. So I like what I like and I'm not really embarrassed by it. All right, so um, what what is like your number one marketing strategy to get your music out to uh to the, to the local people in your area? It's like you're asking me to give out my secrets. <laughs> just joking. I don't have any secrets, but um, as far as I guess getting stuff out is just putting it out there. You know, like. If you want your music out there, number one, put it out there. And then number two, promote it. Like it's kind of like endless work. You know, you, you put all this energy and time into like creating something, which not, not only does it take a long time to create it, then it takes a long time to record it. And then you got to promote it and then you got to push it. And then you got to make sure, you know, to repeat the whole thing. It's just like a huge ordeal. So it depends on like how far you want it or how, how much you want to push something. Um, I mean, I know on our last CP, we kind of pushed it a little bit harder than anything else we've kind of done, but it was, it was finally a piece of work that we felt very proud of as far as, you know, we had recorded that one EP I just mentioned that were kind of like demos, but this one like finally sounded like us. And that's kind of a hard thing to do. Like when it comes to recording, it's like, getting your recordings to sound like you is kind of a challenge. It's not as easy as it is. You don't just like put a microphone or record and then it sounds like you. It's actually super difficult. So when we finally achieved that, we were excited and we, you know, we try to push it as best as we could by just putting it out there and promoting it, you know, as much as we possibly could ourselves. So if you weren't playing in a band, what would you be doing? you mean like um if I wasn't doing a band I'd probably be doing like a solo thing honestly I used to think that I wouldn't but I, I kind of like enjoy playing music and 
you know, if the band didn't continue on, I would just continue doing something different. But I mean, as far as like, I feel like my, my life is already, um, divided anyways, you know, cause I, it's not like the band is my full-time job. It would be cool if it was, but, but then again, it wouldn't cause you know, it might suck the fun out of it. But, um, you know, I, I actually do marketing on the other side. So, I mean, there's a lot of things that I could do instead of this, but I choose to do this cause it's the most fun and the most rewarding in the end. All right. So, um, let us know about your future goals in 2021. My biggest goal is I just want to put out more music. That's kind of like the one area that I feel like we haven't been really good at. Like, you know, we've played a lot of shows. We've, we've built a lot of stuff. We've kind of like built a little bit of an online presence. We've, we've done a lot of groundwork and we have a lot of songs. We have enough, we have more than enough to do an album, but I think we're going to break that up. Um, so the, my biggest goal for 2021 is I want another EP at least out like another EP or at least like a few singles. I, I haven't really decided how I want to do it, but I just want to put out more music. So that's my goal is maybe play less and put out more. Best advice you've been given. Um, best advice. I guess just be yourself kind of like, you know, don't send other people and just kind of do what you think is, is right. Cause everyone will tell you what they think you should do or how you should react or how you should go about. And, you know, at first you're like, okay, whatever. But then after like, it, it gets really easy to start doubting yourself when everyone's, you know, telling you something different. But, you know, I think uh, the best piece of advice is just to, just do what feels right and do do it for yourself. Um, and then I guess you'll just you'll always be happy because you're you're doing it for yourself. What would you say to any upcoming band in your local area? I'm sorry, what would I what? What would you say or what would the best advice you would tell to any upcoming band in your local area? what I would say to an up and coming band um, in the local area, just to play shows and, you know, make friends and like, you know, have fun and kind of the same advice that I was given is just do you and not worry about, don't worry about the small things. I think one of the biggest mistakes I made was trying to do everything up front before we were even ready to do the, those kind of things. So I could have probably alleviated a lot of headache if I hadn't jumped the gun on a few things. So kind of like take it step by step and don't try to like <laughs> race and do it all quickly. It's it's kind of better to do it slowly and steady versus, you know, um, all together. I'm not even sure what I'm trying to say at this point, but I think you got my point. All right. So um, how is your band going to do? How is your band going to evolve from here on? I mean, I think it's going to evolve naturally as far as, I guess, music goes. You know, I'm hoping that we'll write more stuff, which we have been doing, and putting out more music. And if we can just evolve as better musicians and put out better music and, like, you know, have each EP or album or song be better than the next, and that's all that, that that's all that I'd really want. All right. Um, you got any special shout outs you want to give? Shout outs. I mean, <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. Um, I'm thank you for, you know, having us on your podcast is pretty cool. I'm, I'm excited to be on here and, you know, experience this. And, um, I'm all about, you know, people who keep the music community alive, which is what you're pretty much doing. So that's always neat. We need all sorts of people, you know, putting out all sorts of things. And um, I feel like sometimes people in, I guess, not only your position, but like even promoters or venue people or anybody don't get enough recognition for what they do because they're also helping keeping 
the music out there and alive. So thank you. No, thank you very much. And um, final words and plug in your social media and let everyone know where they can stream your music at. Sure. We're on, um, you know, the top three. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all under Quinn the Brain. Um, I think Twitter is Quinn the Brain Texas. But, and you can listen to us anywhere. Um, we're on all the digital platforms of so Spotify, Amazon, Apple, Deezer, Napster, whatever you listen to, we're on there. Um, we also have a website, quinthebrain.com, for all of our merch. So if you like what you hear, you know, go ahead and buy a CD and support us that way because the best way to support us is to buy our merch so we can make more music because that's where all our – that's how we get the money and that's how that's how we pay to record. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. Quinthebrain, this is for the music podcast.